everyone. I'm Ashley Song, the Edge Chair for 2021. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I originally started in residential real estate and always had a thirst for commercial real estate. And I wish at that time I knew um, I had something like this, a webinar that would shed some light as to what commercial real estate entails. So that's what we're trying to bring you today. Um, I hope this webinar will help expand your vision and knowledge in commercial real estate uh, as we will talk about the ins and outs um, of commercial real estate. So let's get started. And uh, I think it's best if I allow all the panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, we have Ritu Rani from Miami chapter. We have Leigh Fams from San Francisco and Anthony Rivera from New Jersey. Um, I'll let Ritu start. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that, that welcome, Ashley. I'm so excited to be here and to be participating in an EDGE webinar. I am the commercial chair for ARIA, so I do kind of what Ashley does, but on the commercial side, um, I am a commercial broker um, and I am from the Florida chapter. I, I work with a lot of different clients on passive investing, active investing, um, a whole, whole bunch of stuff in a lot of different asset classes, but my specialty is really hospitality and multifamily and um, very excited to participate today. So thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, Ritu. All right, let's go to Lei. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Ashley. Um, my name is Lei. I'm with California Big and Trust. I um, am a, the business center manager, and um, I'm really happy to and excited to be here. Great, thank you. And Anthony? Yes, uh, thank you, Ashley, and thank you for having me on this great panel uh, discussion uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Anthony Rivera. I'm the co-founder and managing partner of commercialrealestateboss.com. We're a coaching and training platform for residential agents to learn how to do more deals uh, and bigger deals in the commercial uh, realm of real estate. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, sharing uh, my thoughts on this and, uh, and taking it from there. So thank you for having me. Great. So I'm just going to spin it off here, Anthony. How did you get into commercial real estate? What's your background? Sure. My background is actually Wall Street. Uh, so I came from the finance world. Uh, and, you know, uh, so we're actually coming up on the cusp of 9-11. Uh, 9-11, uh, let me tell you a, a, a very blessed story about my background. It'll give you a flavor of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So 9-11, uh, I was a 28-year-old stockbroker for Morgan Stanley Dean Witter on the 73rd floor of Tower 2. And so the day before, my mother says, son, don't go to work tomorrow because we're going to renew our passports for a trip to Our Lady Fatima. I'm a Catholic. And so instead of going to work on the 73rd floor, I went to my parents' house half hour away in West Caldwell. And... Um, so from there, uh, I, I was saved by my faith and my mother to, uh, uh, by not going to work on September 11th. And, uh, that actually really made me think, okay, I'm definitely being watched out for, uh, uh, in, in my life. And, uh, as you know, with the stock market guys, uh, back then I was a 20 year old stockbroker. Uh, I've seen the boom and bust. And then from there, I was like, you know what? The, the stock market is a little bit uh, hectic as far as the, um, the progression of it. So I transitioned to commercial real estate because of the booms and busts in the, in the stock market. So my background in the past now 15 years has been in commercial real estate because I want to still stick with the institutional side of investing. Something slow and steady, which as you guys know, commercial real estate is about. And so that's what brings me to um, commercial real estate today and now paying it forward because of me um, having, you know, been, if you will, uh, given the chance to help others in my life. That's what I do with my platform of commercial real estate boss is to really help those residential agents learn how to do commercial deals because there's nothing else uh, like it out there that's providing this type of service. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad that uh, your faith saved you that day because otherwise you wouldn't be here with us today. So thank God. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Ritu, uh, why don't you yeah. share a little bit about how you've gone to commercial real estate? Sure. So my background is actually in corporate. I always had corporate jobs. I used to work for Time Inc. I worked for Walt Disney. I worked for Kirshner. They own the Atlantis Resorts. 
Um, so I was always doing corporate work and then I had a baby and there was a uh, very little that you could do that was part-time that was work from home. Now stuff has changed, but I really got into commercial real estate because I've got, you know, I've got my MBA, I've got all that corporate background and training. And it was something that I could do that was just a little more flexible. Little did I know I'd be working twice as hard as I was working um, when I had a corporate job, but you know, it's really the flexibility that, that got me into it. And I I've been doing this for the last eight years. So great. I'm sure a lot of us women can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Leigh, how about you? What's your background and how'd you get started in uh, commercial real estate lending? Uh, my background is in education, but I didn't um, become a teacher just because we all know that that's social work. So I went into banking. I grew up in the bank. I, I had roles from being a teller, a personal banker. I did stints in merchant services but my favorite role was the SBA lending piece. Um, I really love the SBA program. I think it's really great for small business. Small businesses are the backbone of you know, America. And it's just really great to have this program for a small business to get access to capital, purchase commercial real estate. Yeah, and so now, and then now, I'm, and now I'm um, a branch manager in the SF office for California Bank and Trust. Great. Thanks, Leigh. And so uh, it sounds like you specialize in the SBA area. What other uh, types of products do you offer at California Bank and Trust? So with SBA, there's two products. There's a 504 loan and then the 7A. We also do conventional lending and then also for investment properties as well. I see. Okay, we'll talk about that further. And so, um, Anthony, going back to you, what, what part of commercial real estate do you specialize in? As we all know, it's, uh, there's many different products within commercial real estate, right? It's not just like, okay, it's one hotel building or apartment building or, or you know, industrial. There's multiple uh, sources and you know, products. So what do you specialize in and also uh, which area? Okay, sure, sure. Well, I've been specializing along with my brother and business partner, self-storage development. Uh, because here in the Northeast, as you know, it's very dense with a huge population in the New York City uh, area, as well as northern New Jersey. So uh, really, this segment in the past really seven, eight years, self-storage development has been my bread and butter. Uh, so you guys are familiar with uh, the names that you've seen out there, CubeSmart, Extra Space, Life Storage, Public Storage. Uh, little do people know that a lot of it's backed by huge, huge private equity money. Um, my clients actually are backed by the names that you guys know, Blackstone, BlackRock, Carlyle Group. So there's no issue about financing. It's all about finding the deals in the locations that uh, the developers want to be in. And that's what I've been specializing in for the past seven, eight years and have been doing all along the Eastern seaboard as well as down South. So I know Ritu, you mentioned you're in Florida. I'm actually going to, starting this um, winter, going to be a snowbird and uh, moving down to Brickell, Miami. And so I have wow. a lot of deals that are happening in the Texas and Florida uh, area. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, to building my business further down there, because as you guys know, the migration is happening uh, in the South, if you will. A lot yes. of, I can tell you, Northeasterners are moving from uh, the Northeast to down South. So we're really excited about that. But when I first got into commercial real estate was, of course, the sexy part of real estate, which was retail, the Whole Foods of the world, the Starbucks and so on. And this is going back, you know, 15, 14 years ago where uh, retail was still pretty strong. But then ever since, as you guys know, Amazon came on the scene and a lot of other uh, e-commerce businesses, it's really uh, put retail in, in a bind at this point. So as you know, they're repositioning what they're doing in retail at this point, but for me, self-storage and soon to be uh, also cannabis uh, real estate where it's already approved in certain states. We've already been uh, making a uh, groundwork in that. So let me ask you this, what challenges ha uh, have you faced during, well, prior to pandemic, during the pandemic and, you know, as we're getting out of it, hopefully, and, you know, future sure, of sure, the pandemic? Sure. Well, uh, good, good, yeah, very good question because uh, when the pandemic hit, my brother and I had about three deals that were literally on the 11th uh, or the uh, uh, 11th hour, the, with the uh, five yard line, if you will, in, in football, they were right there about to close. And then when the pandemic hit, it 
scared the investors because obviously you didn't know the, the unknown of going forward, especially with these big development deals that we do in Northern Jersey, they, they could they end up being a $20 million commitment, you know, as far as uh, construction and everything like that and the acquisition of land. So it basically killed a few of our deals in the meantime. And so we had to kind of scramble and look at some other uh, sites and do other type of commercial real estate as well. But now a few of them have come back and now to the uh, negotiation tables and, and things like that. But uh, right now uh, we're actually, COVID is helping now uh, self storage because people are uh, moving around. And as you know, people's homes have become offices. Uh, so uh, people are putting their things into storage, either upsizing, downsizing their apartments and so on, and their offices, things that they didn't need in their office, now they're putting it away in storage units because they don't need those extra desks, chairs, uh, computer hardware, and so on. So, mm -hmm. and, and so what led you to have this interest into this part of commercial real estate? Like what led you to uh, this? Was there a calling or was it just like, okay, this will make the most money? <laughs> you know, like what was the thought process there? Well, definitely uh, a need in the, um, uh, the money was there. So it's always part of uh, a deal, especially a commercial deal, as you guys know, is uh, finding the money. And of course, we go through the banks as well. Uh, if we're looking at a construction loan and things like that. But it, I already found out that it was definitely a moneymaker. Uh, it it's a darling of the commercial real estate world. And it flies under the radar. Not a lot of people know about it. I mean, as you guys go to various networking events, you don't come across a self-storage broker, uh, self-storage commercial broker, uh, which my brother and I like because not we're not all out there, uh, you know, as a, say, a retail uh, commercial broker or an office broker. Self-storage is very niche and uh, we like that, but a lot of money is involved in it uh, and it's a necessity uh, and you're seeing it everywhere. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it all came together and kind of we have that foresight, thankfully to uh, see where the trends are. And so we, we identified soft storage back eight, nine years ago before you're seeing it all over the place now. So wow, we're actually awesome. considered the so soft storage brokers of New Jersey, if you will. Other, other brokers from uh, different disciplines actually send my brother and I sites to vet uh, to see if those, um, those deals have legs um, because they know that we, we have the connections and network and know-how. Uh, to do self storage, to do a success, successful self storage deal. So great. I well, I have more questions for you, but let's move forward to Ritu yeah, 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 before I continue the entire <laughs> panel with you. But going to Ritu, um, what do you specialize in and which area? Sure. So I do mostly uh, hospitality and multifamily. And, um, you know, clearly Florida is a lot of where my business is, but since I'm from New York, I have a lot of deals going in New York and Texas just because of the demand, you know, as with the residential market, um, people are, are leaving to go to the South and then where the residential flows, the commercial is not far behind because then you need all those commercial services after um, the residential opens up and is, um, you know, we're just seeing this huge migration to the South. But, you know, the reason why I focus in those areas is because my corporate background is really hospitality but there was one part of my resume that I left out. I actually started in commercial real estate because I started as an investor, investing and buying my own multifamily down here in the Miami area. So, you know, I think that that is a really easy transition. I know you're gonna to get to that a little bit later, but it's just an easy transition for people um, wanting to invest in commercial multifamily because it's just like, you know, we've all lived in apartments, houses, whatever. It's like where you live. So it, just understanding it, you, you've lived in a house or an apartment all your life. So you have some basic understanding, whereas some stuff like storage or hospitality, it's just, I mean, it's a completely different language that you need to learn um, to start investing in that kind of stuff. But the reason why I got into, into multifamily was because it was very easy for me. Um, and then the hospitality is just all my, my corporate background um, in hospitality. So I've got those connections already and I love the space so do you focus outside of your area or do you are you um, also transacting and investing outside state 
it's outside. I mean, I get stuff nationally. Um, you know, a lot of the players, they, you know, once you start working with, with a client, you go after what that client wants and they own hotels or multifamily projects in several different places. And it's usually, I get a lot of requests for California um, as well, but it's California, Texas, uh, Florida, and New York are the four areas that I that I usually work in, but, you know, I just got a whole portfolio in Boston. So, you know, it, you never know. It just, it, it really depends, but yes, nationally. And I think that's just because of my, the people that I know already, um, you know, when they ask you're as a broker, we try and serve everyone and, and really help and, and give our knowledge. And I think it's, it's also helped those particular areas because I've lived in all those cities. I've lived in New York, I actually went to college in Boston. I did my grad school in Texas. I lived in LA for a while and uh, San Francisco. So I know those markets. So I think that that's also really critical to being a good broker or, or you know, doing investments. You should know the market that you're investing in. It's, it's very hard to sell or to buy something in an area that you're just not familiar with at all, so. Yeah, no, absolutely agree with that. And, and your specialty is actually quite interesting and I'm sure it actually did make a difference during the pandemic. So why don't you share how it was prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, right now and where you see the future going? Okay, sure. So prior to the pandemic, you know, everyone was investing in multifamily. It's always been a hot tried and true um, investment for people the hotel market was doing well. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad, but it was doing well. Now pandemic happens, um, everything comes to a screeching halt for a little while, but the hospitality market that got hit, I would say harder than anything else, except for maybe retail, they're probably neck and neck, but the hospitality market is recovering. People are traveling. It's the business travel that hasn't recovered. The um, the personal travel, the leisure travel has definitely bounced, bounced back up, um, but more so in, um, you know, the leisure markets like San Francisco is really hurting. New York is still really hurting. When I say they're hurting, I mean, the city centers, because they rely more on the corporate travel to get their room rates up and to get the overall spend in the hotel and the bookings, everything. So, um, but overall, I am seeing more transactions happen in the hotel space. You know, when COVID happened, I'm not even going to tell you how much commission I lost with deals, just, you know, people walking away from, from hard deposits and, and you work on these deals for like eight months, nine months. They're not, it's not like residential. Um, and, and it's just, it's, it's really sad, but now I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it come back up. And especially, you know, I mentioned the leisure market, um, host hospitality. They're one of the, I believe they're the largest REIT, um, hospitality REIT. They just bought, um, a property in uh, the Florida Keys for a million dollars a key. It's a 200 room hotel, um, but it's it's amazing that we're getting that kind of, like that's the highest price that we've seen trade down there. So, you know, I'm definitely seeing a bounce back. Now on the multifamily side, it has gone crazy. You people are buying, normally they would buy three caps in New York City and then they'd come down and call me, oh, can I get a five cap in Florida? Sure. I'll show you a ton of stuff. Five cap, six cap. Now the cap rates in Florida have gone down. They're at New York City, what used to be New York City levels. It's very hard to find land to develop. It's hard to find existing multifamily, especially the larger you go, because you've got all these groups that are just looking to spend money. They've been holding on to it during the pandemic and they're just waiting right now. And they're a little concerned with the administration also and the tax issues. So people are just dying to spend money on, on multifamily more than any other asset class. I would say near that self-storage ranks really high and industrial ranks really high because of the influx of online shopping and people moving. People moving means storage and online shopping is because pandemic people don't wanna go out. And I think that trend is gonna be here to stay. It was just, um, you know, the pandemic just helped um, speed up the process of people being more comfortable with online shopping, but those warehouses are in very high demand. Um, so that's really what I see. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's very informative. So um, on this webinar right now, we're focusing uh, towards 
first time commercial real estate investors and also uh, residential realtors who are thinking about jumping into commercial real estate. Um, when we speak about cap rates and things like that, can you further elaborate as to what that means and how that is calculated just so everyone can have a basic understanding of it? Are, are you asking are me or are you asking? I, I, maybe, maybe we let uh, Lee Pham answer. I mean, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> I just feel bad. She hasn't um, had a chance to, to talk yet. Because no, this is really free. a banking. I, I can chime in. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you share a little bit about um, how how are cap rates calculated for investors' standpoint? For invest, I mostly work on owner occupied um, properties or transactions as opposed to the investment. So maybe we too would have a, a better um, perspective. Oh, sure. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't want to take the floor, but um, yeah, with the cap rate, what you have to do, you have to look at your overall profitability and then divide that by the cost of um, your acquisition. So, you know, when I say cap rates, it's, it's how much return you're getting on your money. And, you know, one very important thing that you should consider as an investor I would say the first thing is to find out how much money you can borrow because just like residential or buying a house, you know, you can't, you can't go into something if you have no idea what your budget is. But, um, you know, I think a, another thing is, um, you know, going to an area that you feel comfortable with or that you like um, is, is very important because if you're going to keep investing in that, you, you should believe in like the self-storage or in the industrial or believe in the hospitality market that, that's something that's really gonna come back or that that's booming. So it's gotta be something that you like. And um, you know, some of my other things that I would tell a first time investor is um, you have to think about your hold periods. You know, do you want to keep that money in for five years, for 10 years? Um, that's another very important thing um, to consider. And how active do you wanna be in the whole process? Because, um, you know, something like hotels is very, very hands-on or, um, you know, multifamily is, is not as hands-on if you get a management company to do it, or you could do private placement where you just um, put in a little bit of money and it's a big group that's, that's buying the multifamily. So you get that institutional um, learning and knowledge and your money is somewhat safer, but you're not going to see the same returns because they're going to take a portion of that. But that might be a nice way to get comfortable with commercial real estate and investing in it because you've got like a big company that's tried and true that's been doing that. So I work with a lot of those um, groups as well that, that look for money. Um, so it's something that, that I could help with, but I think, um, you know, just the money is, is number one, finding out how much you can borrow. Um, and it's different across different asset classes as well. Um, which lay, I'm sure you can, you can talk more to, but like hotels are considered extremely risky. Um, so you have to put more money down. The interest rates are higher. There are different types of loans. Um, you know, with, with stuff like multifamily, it's much easier to get, to get loans. Um, so. Great. Thanks for you too. So going into that, um, I know that money obviously is important, but also the main thing would be identifying the deal, right? It's, it's so hard to come across a good deal. I'm just wondering for first time investors and even for residential realtors who are trying to go into commercial real estate, they might have a client decide that they want to go into commercial real estate uh, investing, that is. And now they can't find a deal because we all know that like a tight knit close community of brokers that pretty much knows everything that's going around, right? Like you have to know someone in order to get the deal. So my question for Anthony is how do you identify these deals? And what are what did you do in the beginning in order to even get your first deal? Sure, sure. No, that's a great question. As you guys know, and I, I think this rings true for all our businesses, it's all about relationships, right? Relationships in possibly even your past life before what we're doing today. But, you know, because again, me coming from the world of Wall Street, I was able to leverage uh, certain uh, relationships that I've had on Wall Street uh, to bring into commercial real estate because they're all about the mindset of investing, right? Investing into assets to diversify their overall portfolio. So whether it's securities markets or real property, uh, that's part of the equation. But 
as far as finding the deals, and that's what my brother and I do. We're the uh, thankfully the, the rainmakers, the ones to really find the deals. And as you everyone knows here is that a lot of it's off market. And so we do lean on our resources, our professional colleagues, networks, whether they're uh, commercial real estate CPAs, um, attorneys, uh, title agents, uh, engineers, architects. I always teach my student agents, uh, you probably have contacts in your cell phone that you haven't really maximized yet because you haven't, they haven't looked at you as a commercial real estate person yet uh, and vice versa. Uh, so I always say, focus on those uh, professions that are building their business, that are entrepreneurs, that, that maybe have one or two partners in their firm, and they're looking to grow their client base, and that they touch investing in commercial real estate and invite them to have coffee or lunch because they'll be people will be surprised on the amount of type of business that they can garner from just making those few uh, proactive reach outs to other professions in the in the industry. So it doesn't necessarily have to be commercial real estate agents or brokers, but anybody that services the commercial real estate realm. So construction people, you know, you we talked about multifamily because they're dealing with um, uh, developers that develop mixed use buildings. You know, they have commercial on the ground level and, you know, a luxury high rise on top, uh, hotels like that as well. So that's why I say is leverage your network. It's all about relationships. And then uh, you take it from there. Um, and that's what we, uh, we, we teach best practices you know, on our platform. But you start how, with how did people you, that you know. How, how did you identify your first deal? Okay. Well, how did I identify my first deal? Well, okay, let me go back. <laughs> uh, well, I already knew that, uh, again, commercial real estate um, is, you know, institutional. You have to know well, what you're doing. And so I made sure that I aligned myself with one of the top retail commercial brokers in my area in northern New Jersey. And it came down to two firms. The one firm had, I saw their their signs on all the shopping centers as far as representation of uh, shopping centers. So I went with them and they actually, you know, really coached me through uh, how to identify certain sites and build relationships with landlords. So, so the main thing is uh, uh, zoning. Zoning is very important, of course, uh, making sure that you know where the zones of different properties are. But talking about our, uh, my first deal, it was just, uh, my first commercial deal was an, uh, actually a layup. It was a four day, four day deal from beginning to end. And it actually ended up on my lap. It was a call that came in to the office and they gave me the site specifications. I was able to find three uh, locations on LoopNet and then the second one worked. And then the third day we were able to uh, sign the deal. Have the, so, but that's only happened once and that first time only. So, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Did you want to add anything to that, Ritu? How about for you? How do you identify your deals? And what did? how did you identify your first deal? Uh, well, I actually never liked that. No, that I, that I, that I bought you're, for you're myself. Investor, right. No, no. I mean, I, 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 I invest as well. So, you know, the first deal, I mean, I didn't know much about commercial real estate when I, when I invested my first deal. And I mean, I, honestly used my MBA skills and I looked at the return. I'm like, okay, I can keep my money in the bank or I can buy stuff in downtown Miami, which, you know, eventually one day, I think there's going to be a future for, but just the rents that I was getting off the money was much more than what I was getting, leaving it in my Citibank account. And this is someone with like, you know, my parents don't know anything about investing. They're immigrants you know, they're like, I don't know. I don't know what you should do. No advice, no, no anything. So that's how I found my first deal. But now, you know, I would say really learn how to underwrite or work with, you know, I tell a lot of my clients, I introduce them. I have several bankers that I work with, have the bankers help you underwrite the deals because they can tell you whether it makes sense or not also. Um, but I think just learning how to underwrite them yourself if you're going to start investing is, is a huge skill um, that, that will help you just simple spreadsheets on, on where you see the money um, coming in. But it depends again on the asset class because with every asset class, the, the variables are different. So 
Great, thanks for you too. Uh, I definitely agree with that. So with, um, I know that like you, uh, you specialize in owner occupied buildings. So for example, someone like me, who's also a business owner, that's how I got into commercial real estate. Um, I actually own my own businesses. And originally we were a residential business and then it got into a commercial building. And from that point on, um, that's when I decided to explore opportunities in commercial uh, investing into commercial real estate. And that's how I met Lei. So she uh, specializes in SBA and this will be good for anyone who has businesses that are, that are looking to purchase a building for themselves. Um, I think Lei could shed some light as to what products they have to offer and how you could get started in that area. So SBA lending, um, it's a great product. Um, there's there's two there's two different types of loans. There's a 504 loan, um, which is um, only um, for purchasing real estate, and then there's a 7A, which encompasses um, business acquisition, um, lines of credits, etc. Um, uh, again, SBA is really great program, which helps the the small business purchase um, real estate. Um, it's because the the rates are a little bit, or the rates are below market rate, and um, you you come in with um, a ten percent injection as opposed to a conventional loan where you come in with the thirty percent. So it's really great um, in that aspect mm -hmm. as well. And then the requirements are a little bit um, less than the conventional loans, where um, your credit score needs to be a minimum of six fifty. And right. So the underwriting is a little bit more lean as opposed to conventional lending. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks, Lay. I appreciate that. And go, going back to Anthony, I know that you mentioned that you have a coaching business in the commercial real estate sector. Um, what exactly do you teach there and who's your target student? Sure, so I put it this way. Like remember I mentioned about relationships guys. And so, uh, we all have relationships. I know people that you don't know, and you know people that I don't know, but we all have clients and relationships, and nobody takes care of those relationships better than we, we do. Uh, let me give you a story about one of my students in Houston, Texas. He referred over a $6 million development deal to his broker of record because he didn't know how to do a commercial, a commercial deal. He referred, it was a $6 million deal. Uh, the broker of record never even followed up with a phone call to that client and he lost on a potential $300,000 commission and damaged his relationship uh, with that, that particular client. So I, he said, I need coaching in commercial real estate right now because these deals, these potential commercial deals, I don't know how to go about it. So it came out of necessity that I've been hearing over and over again that commercial brokers don't like to share about their skill set and about the intricacies of doing a deal. My brother and I are different. What we do is we share, we feel that there's enough clients, there's enough properties, and there's enough money in, the, in commercial real estate to really um, share what we do. And so that's what we do is we put our tutelage onto webinars and people can watch these webinars at their own convenience and learn about the infrastructure of real estate, like zoning, like floor area ratios, environmental studies, things like that. But then also you have access to my brother and I in terms of calling us on the phone, emailing or texting us, walking you through a deal, walking through you through an actual deal. And uh, we're very happy to do that for our students. And now, again, like I said, we've had uh, students in eight states and growing, and eventually we're going to uh, translate our webinars into Spanish for the Spanish speaking agents and, uh, and go from there and then, and then go internationally. So, um, but yeah, and, it's been very And so your students, are they, uh, resi are they originally residential realtors trying to get into commercial real estate? Yeah. Correct, they're mostly residential agents wanting to learn how to do commercial deals because they know it's a totally different animal and they don't know the first thing to, to get into it. So we really break it down in terms of first explaining what the segments, like you alluded this, to this uh, earlier, the different segments of commercial real estate are like retail, office, medical, self-storage, so on, uh, hotels, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and then really go it from down there. Um, uh, and then and, and then we basically open uh, Pandora's box to, uh, for everybody. So uh, that's, the way, that's the way we've been uh, brought up is really sharing. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, 
that's not uh, uh, really the mostly the commercial community out there that uh, residential agents have encountered. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, uh, for Ritu, where do you see the main differences in uh, residential and commercial real estate on a, well, I mean, I, I guess you wouldn't be able to tell on a broker's perspective because you were never really a, uh, a residential realtor, but how about on an investment perspective? For example, there's multifamily, but anything four units and over is considered commercial and everything under is considered residential. Did you start investing into larger multifamily or with a smaller multifamily? Units? Okay. So I, you know, I actually, I can answer both of your questions. So from a, a realtor's perspective, I have dabbled a little bit in residential. So I do know that side. I think the biggest difference is that residential is um, if you're working with like people like you and me, you know, just regular people that don't know anything about purchasing or they know very little and it's much more of an emotional sell whereas commercial, it's a numbers game. People are investing in commercial real estate because that's the return. That's what they're putting food on the table with. It's not their home. So um, I think that is the, the main difference, but from an investor's perspective, yes, I started very, very small because I didn't know, you know, I'm afraid to like put down all this money in something that I don't know much about. But I think from an investor's perspective, starting off small is, is definitely good, but you need to ask yourself those questions that, you know, I had brought up before, like, how long do you want to hold this for? What type of return? What type of asset classes? How hands on do you want to be? Um, do you want to, uh, you know, do you want to be part of a larger group or do you want to just do this on your own? Um, mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of funds out there that, that can help you along the way. But I think learning as much as possible, getting involved with organizations just like ARIA, because we've got so many good educational um, content out there, like this webinar that you're, you're putting together and that networking and, you know, Anthony mentioned it's your connection. So, you know, the Aria family, it's like opening up your connections. You've got people here that are ready and willing and happy to talk to you and help you succeed. Because I also like Anthony, I believe like, you know, it, what goes around comes around. And if you put that information out there and that energy, like people are going to come back to you and they're going to ask for your help on a deal at some point, it, it, it's, it's all going to come back. So I think using, using those connections. Now, if you're really serious about getting into commercial real estate, you know, maybe take some classes with CCIM or, you know, get your MBA, stuff like that will, will really help, um, get into commercial real estate. Um, and then there are a lot of services. I mean, we did one webinar on Comstack and Catalyst. You know, there are other services that you can use um, that can help you with some of the data if you don't want to jump in and get a CoStar um, subscription right away. Although CoStar is really what you'll need if that's what you're doing full time, day in and day out. Um, but you know, the the other thing is just using. I'm going to go back to this using your network. Um, you know, a lot of people in commercial, they like these off market deals. They want to know about stuff before anyone else knows about it. They want stuff done quietly. So, um, you know, they're probably, you know, a lot of people that you don't think about that, that are looking to offload that, that you might, you know, I don't know, your attorney, your accountant, somebody that, um, mm -hmm. you could, you could tap on them because chances are they've got commercial clients and, and they mm -hmm. could help you too. If, if that's what you're, um, you're looking to start investing in, um, they're, they're all good people to talk to. And also in commercial real estate, I, mm -hmm. I don't think, um, you or Anthony has touched upon this subject yet, but there's leasing too. <laughs> there's, yes. uh, definitely there's sales, there's this, there's that, um, for us, you know, I'm in commercial real estate as well. And we do a lot of leases here in San Francisco because the sales, like you said, Ritu and Anthony, it takes a long time to close, right? Like something yes. could take 18 months or even up to two years, sometimes depending on how big of a deal is, uh, it is, you know, and how many things are required. So there's also the leasing part where you could represent a tenant and a landlord. Um, for the tenant, for example, they'll need, a, if they're looking to downsize or upsize their business, then they'll need help identifying these spaces. And also for the landlords, um, if, you know, they have an empty space, especially during the pandemic, lots of retail space open, lots of office spaces open. 
now you now you can also represent the landlord. I'm talking from a broker's perspective, right? Um, and so, and even if you are a business owner, for example, you can't just talk to any commercial realtor because any commercial real estate broker or realtor will be able to help you the same way because everyone has their own specialty. Um, just wanted to throw that in there because I think the entire time we've been talking about sales and investing. So there's also the lease portion of commercial real estate, which is why it makes it so fun. And it's a whole total different animal. Yeah, actually, I let think. me, if, uh, if I may, Ashley and the rest of the group, uh, one of our biggest and most prolific deals was a uh, long-term ground lease deal that was written up in the real deal, New York City. So if I might just share real quickly, my brother was able to, you know, we found out where the zoning was for self-storage in Staten Island, New York. And uh, what my brother did was he actually uh, looked at Google Maps and was able to put that little guy, that little uh, icon person into the zone of where self-storage was approved. And then basically started cold calling the certain businesses, the, the names that he saw on the, his computer screen that uh, would be possible uh, sites for self-storage development. We came across one such uh, site called the Tranchina Paving Company. Uh, and we found them at the right time because the matriarch of the business was looking to sell the business, was looking to close down the business and retire. And so luckily we were direct to the, uh, the owner and it ended up being that uh, we had a, uh, a private equity group to be the developer for a new self storage facility. And lo and behold, it ended up being a 49 year initial term lease with five uh, 10 year options going out to 99 years. And it ended up being a $70 million uh, ground lease deal written up in the real deal. It was the number four top 10 um, New York City deals in 2017 in the real deal. And it got my brother and I uh, very good press in, uh, in the real deal. Uh, and we're, we're very proud of it to the, today. It's a, a life storage, self storage development right now. That's just one. And that's just one. That's of awesome. Them. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing. That's amazing. Ritu, I'm, uh, I know that you were trying to say something at the same time. Is there something that you want to share too? Um, what was the question? What, what did we end on? I can't uh, we're, <laughs> 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 we were talking about leases, how, uh, oh, you know, right. within okay. commercial real estate. Okay, so as well. yeah, I yeah. wanted to say, um, Ashley, that's a really good point um, with the leases. And I think, um, you know, much like residential, I think leasing, if you start small, I think that's a great way to get into commercial as well, because you're not dealing, I mean, it's just, it, it's easier, it's fast, you'll see the return. Um, it, it's like your bread and butter, if that's something that excites you. So I think leasing is a good way to get exposed. So that's a really good point. I just don't do any leasing. So I kind of tend to forget about it, but I think that's a fantastic way to get in um, from a a realtor's perspective to get into the commercial space um, to, to pick up a couple of lease deals. Yeah, and even on our end here in San Francisco, um, my partner and I, we ended up leasing something here in San Francisco to uh, the city <laughs> for mm -hmm. the homeless, right? And um, for housing. And that was actually one of the largest deals, also office deals here in San Francisco, Q1 2020. It was like right before the pandemic. So we were really, really proud about wow. that one as well. So yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, and, you know, at that time I was just getting started too. And I didn't realize that you could lease to the city and they're willing to pay millions of dollars in rent per, um, yes. per year, right? Like the budget, all these yeah. different things. Exactly. And there's just so many things to learn. And um, one thing that I've realized in commercial real estate is that every deal is different. You cannot take every deal the same. And also everything's negotiable and you can always get creative with things. Um, a lot of times in certain deals, people say, okay, I only want, for example, let's just say a seller wants X amount and the buyer wants X amount. We just have to get creative with little things in between and we can get them to meet in the middle. That's like the, uh, what I've noticed is negotiation is the most important part in any deal and who you have on your team will make the biggest impact because if you don't have someone that's going to be able to negotiate and uh, represent you properly, the deal would just die early on. It would have been last for one month, you know? <laughs> yeah, so definitely learned a lot about that. Um, Okay, and then going into all this, uh, I think this is a lot of information for people on the call right now. And also we have viewers on Facebook and um, this will also be recorded and will be posted on our website on REF. 
I want to ask, um, so now since we're getting towards the end of it, what last, what is the first thing or first step for a residential realtor to take the first step in order to get into CRE right now and also the investors first step right now if there's one thing that you'll tell them to do at this moment I'll let Anthony start okay well it's really you know finding what what I do is this is really fun for me commercial real estate is fun for me it's a passion so I would say really suggest to residential agents to really find a sector in commercial real estate that you enjoy I have student agents that enjoy retail real estate because they like uh the, uh, the world of Starbucks and Whole Foods and Costco's and things of that world. I have other people that say, you know what, I'm industrial warehouse uh, type. I, I don't mind getting dirty and going into an industrial site and uh, putting on boots and things like that. Or one may be a little more corporate and want to go to the corporate uh, class A office type buildings and those high rises that you see in downtown areas like San Francisco or New York City or Miami. So it really is a matter of gravitating to something that you're kind of interested in and then from there, getting the necessary know-how, uh, the, the coaching and tutelage to learn about the, the technicalities and the structure and infrastructure of doing those type of deals. So whether, like you mentioned, these type of programs through EXP or, or different, uh, uh, different coaching programs, but again, uh, we offer that as well at commercialrealestateboss.com as far as uh, teaching the technical side of it. I always tell people, bring your motivation and ambition and I'll teach you commercial real estate. That's no problem. You know, it's only a process. Everybody started somewhere, right? Uh, everybody started riding bikes somewhere. So that's what I would say for beginning residential agents. How about you, Ritu? Um, you know, if you are a residential agent, I mean, I, I touched on a couple of things, but if there's one thing, I would say go to your board. Your your. I mean, I know Miami, for instance, they've got excellent commercial training and the boards, like you're already paying for your, your realtor board, um, go to your realtor board and sign up for a class there um, just to get a general idea. And then uh, start reaching out to people through your network. But it, it helps if you've got a baseline foundation. Now, aside from reading and all of that, there are resources um, you know, available to you like that. And then you know, we can go on and on about your network and, and ARIA and all those things. But I think the first thing as an agent, I would go and I would take a, take a class at your, um, reach out to your board and, and see what they offer. Um, just so you have some baseline of knowledge. Um, from an investor perspective, I would say, um, you know, find someone that you like to work with because having the right person guide you, the right realtor guide you, or, you know, if it's your attorney, whoever it is, finding that person is, is really critical to your success. Because as you mentioned, if you've got the right person on your team, they'll be able to negotiate that deal for you. And they'll be able to educate you also um, and, and help you walk through and maybe figure out what it is, you know, that, that you want to do and how much time you want to spend. Because these are things that, you know, people ask me all the time. They're like, oh, well, you know, I've got this investor from Europe that wants to buy a hotel. And I'm like, great. That's like telling me I want to buy a house in the United States. Like that means nothing. You know, what type of hotel do you want? Like people don't think through a lot of, um, you know, the steps of, of, of even within an asset class, you know, there, there, there's so many different nuances. So I think um, as an investor, finding the right person to guide you is, is key. Thank you. No, I totally agree with everything that Ritu and Vinny have said so far. And uh, I will leave it as when you do figure out what asset class you want to focus on, and maybe you don't have a focus right away, because a lot of times um, going into commercial real estate, we've talked about this so many times, there's just so many things within it. There's so many different products. Um, and even if you don't know, just take the first step and jump in. <laughs> just do the work. The only way that you'll learn is by experience. And, you know, if you find a good mentor, whether the, um, if you're an investor or a realtor, um, I would say find a good mentor, follow them around and just see what they're doing. And, you know, just dip your feet, jump into the ocean. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. That's how you're going to learn moving forward. And uh, with Lay, I do want to also ask you uh, for investors who are owner-occupied, like SBA uh, type investors, 
what should they have prepared before they talk to you? Um, typically, when I speak with a small business, we want to see their financials. Um, typically, it's three years tax returns, um, interims, and um, and then along with their personal uh, tax returns, and then uh, like a personal financial statement, like their own personal balance sheet. And that kind of gets me started to kind of be able to spread the numbers and see if the deal works. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for example, how would, the, if they did find a building, um, should they talk to you first? Should they identify the deal first? What, what, what would you recommend? And once they do identify the deal, then you're saying that they should have all the tax returns together and everything ready so that they could um, give it over to you right when they get the deal, correct? Yeah, typically I like to pre-qualify them first before they get into, before they sign the purchase okay. agreement, just because the timeline is so stringent that um, that we, we probably, the timeline is typically really stringent, like 45 day close, 60 day, uh, I mean, 45 day financing contingency, 60 day close of escrow. So we really wanna pre-qualify them first before they, you know, put and in, provide an injection. And then, you know, they might be um, at risk of losing it if they're not qualifying. The, thanks, Leigh. The, the main reason why I wanted to have Leigh on this panel was really for her to shed some light on the SBA side. Um, as she stated that uh, small businesses, they are a, a big backbone of our um, nation, you know. And so uh, with that said, I wanted her to share that there are opportunities for small businesses. A lot of these small business owners, they, they're so focused on their day ins and day out of just their business that they don't realize that they can actually own their own building versus renting. Um, so I think it's great that uh, SBA has this program and thank you so much for sharing, Leigh. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Um, yeah, so I think that we're uh, getting towards the end of this session. Um, I would like to open up the, the uh, whatever you want to call this, I would like to just open it up for anyone that wants to add anything or if you want to say anything additional to our attendees. Otherwise, then, um, I would like to introduce our uh, incoming EDGE Chair uh, for 2022, Prisca Lee from New Jersey. I'm not sure if she's ready for camera, <laughs> but um, she is our incoming chair for 2022. I just want to uh, put that out there so everyone knows that and um, give her a warm welcome as she will be taking over the EDGE Chair position. Um, and then I would like to say thank you to everyone for viewing this webinar series. I would like to thank our speakers, Ritu and Anthony and Leigh, for being here today and sharing your knowledge in terms of uh, commercial real estate. And also thank you, Aria, for the opportunity um, to share this knowledge for everyone across the real estate industry. So thank you, everyone, and hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.